ever since I was a kid. I've always wondered what life after death was like. One day, my wondering almost became reality. I fell off a wall and on impact, I see myself lying there. So in 2005, I created a group of paranormal investigators. We set out on a journey to capture and document all things paranormal. These are our paranormal case files. On this episode of Paranormal Case Files of PPI, the team travels to Rhinebeck, New York to investigate a private home. There are many claims of full-bodied apparitions, child apparitions, cold spots, a sense of being watched, as well as physical content. So what will the team find? Stay tuned to find out on this episode of Paranormal Case Files of PPI. Feel free to talk to us. You can communicate through that light meter over here. All you have to do is put your hand over it. It won't hurt you. So if you want to do that, you make it light up for yes, and you leave it the way it is for no. Are you, is it Pam? Yeah. Are you Pam's parents? If you're Pam's parents, just put your hand over top of that green light and make it light up some more. It won't hurt you, I promise. You have our word. We just want to make sure it's you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you light up some more? Oh. Get a little closer to it. Don't worry about Ed here. He's just got a camera. You know what a camera is. He's just going to photograph it. Can you come back and light it up some more, please? My name is Aura. This is Ed. We're friends. We're only here to communicate with you. I have a gadget here with a little red light on it. If you talk, I can hear you. So we'll start again. Is this Pam's parents, mom and dad? The ones that lived here? If the answer is yes, Go over by that green light and put your hand over it to light it up. Pam thinks it's her mother that's poking her at night. Is that you? Even in death, you worry about your daughter, right? It's a beautiful thing. Can you talk to us? Talk to Ed. He can hear you better than I can. Griff or anyone else, are you down here with us? Make yourself known, please. If you're able to throw magazines all over the place, I'm sure you could say hi to us. From what your daughter Pam said, you, you don't believe in what we do or what we're in search of. But I beg to defer on that one because uh, when we were upstairs in her bedroom, it seemed that you were making a lot of communication with us.
Are you still upstairs in the bedroom with her? So we have two different kind of devices down here with us right now. One with a green light. If you go near it, wave your hand in front of it. It'll let us know that you're here. Jessica, she also has one, but that's a recorder. You talk into it and we can hear you. If there's anyone at all down here with us right now, make yourself known, please. We know that you, you are here. We just want to know who you are. We have an idea, but we just want to confirm that. Can you help us, please? So you got poked in here? Uh, I got far? poked. I got poked right here. Oh, wow. It came from right here. Mm, that seems to be a thing in this room. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. What happened to Sylvia, Griff, are you here? Can you talk to us, please? I think, uh, I think you poked me before, and that's okay. It didn't hurt. It didn't scare me. It just startled me for a minute. Can you, uh... Papa? Graham? Who's playing around? Are you able to close that door? Yeah. I think there's, uh, we're getting outside noises. Papa? Graham? You here? Papa, you making mischief? But remarkable, Ed, when you got touched downstairs, you were calm. You just started laughing and nice. Well, you know why? Because the little kid was there, and I was probably acting like he was. Yeah, he got comfortable with you. Yeah, he did. That was really, that was really cool. Oh, yeah. Plus, I got to see him, too. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I seen him. Yeah, a lot of shadows. A lot of shadow figures down there. And they're short, very short. Mm. <coughs> so, Mom, are you here? You see what's going on? Trying to... Trying to see what, what you and Daddy are up to. I know you hang around. Are you here now? We've got so much going on in the house all the time, and uh, I know that I know that the kids are in touch with you. I just know it, and uh, I thank you for that because they seem to enjoy talking to you. And I wish that uh, you know you could have been here when they were all born because it was such a great experience. I. Uh, really wish I could have shared that with you. It was, uh, you know, great seeing Jared born and Malcolm born, being right there. And uh, it's just been great, you know, having, having my grandchildren with me. And I can appreciate now how you felt when I had JT and Shallon when they were little. And you got to spend so much time with them. And I'd like to think that that's why you're here, too, because you want to share time with them as well. And uh, I know you liked it here, too. So. And if you're there, Daddy, I want you to know I get my cups in the trees. Yeah. 
I find them. Is that flickering? Yep, it was. Alright, I think we made contact. Yep. Why don't you, um, Jessica, slide that meter towards her a little bit more. I, uh, I found one on the, um, on the deck. And I know I found a couple on my car. I know that was you, Daddy. I know you used to like to play that game with me. Now, what was your dad's name? Griff. Griff. So, we uh, used to be quite the teaser. I hear about the cups. I guess there's a story behind that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When uh, my mom and dad came here to live, uh, my father every morning would go to Dunkin' Donuts and get he and my mom coffee. And then during the day, you know, while I was at work, he would strategically place his coffee cups in the, <laughs> in the, the nooks of the different trees because he knew I was, you know, pretty fastidious about the yard. And I'd, you know, look and all of a sudden there'd be a plastic or a paper cup in the tree. Mm. And, uh, you know, sometimes they'd be empty, sometimes they'd be half full. Yeah. <laughs> it depended. But he'd always leave his little calling card. And uh, one morning I even found one out in my car. Did you do that, Daddy? Light that meter up. There you go. <laughs> I, I can picture you doing that just to get my goat. See if I knew it was you. And I, I suspected because I knew I hadn't been to Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know where you got that cup. Probably down by the road, right? <laughs> Light that meter up. Lay it up for a yes. <laughs> You could use that meter to communicate. There you go. That's right. There you go. There you go. We appreciate that. <laughs> and, uh, hey, Mom, you poke me when I'm sleeping, right? Yeah. Can you light it up all the way for us? We just want, we want confirmation. See if you can make it go to the red light. Just sit right next to that meter. That's all you have to do. Yeah. You just let me know you're there. Or are you waking me up? That would be great, too, because I never really got to say goodbye to you, Daddy. And I always, I've felt very bad about that. I miss you a lot. I hope it didn't hurt your feelings that I didn't spend more time with you in the hospital very hard. I don't know that my priorities were all in order at that time. Mm. Wow. Ooh, yeah. I can, uh, I can relate to that. I've grown up a lot. And, uh, you know, I just want you to know that I, I love both of you very much. You're good parents. Very good parents. We know you used a lot of energy. Oh, yeah. Messing with that meter, lighting it up and talking with us. Definitely. And I appreciate that. That was great. Just remember, Jessica here, she has a, a recorder to record your voice. And if you want, you can speak really loud and clear into it, and we could hear you speak. All you have to do is yell at us, even. would be great to hear you. It's been great to see you. Did you hear anything, honey, real time? It's okay, you might be tired. <laughs> At least I know now you're not shy. I've seen your energy. I was actually going to ask my grandmother if she remembered uh, listening to uh, John Lennon 
with me when she used to cook dinner. Because she, um, she used to hum, uh, Yes, I'm Your Angel, that uh, Yoko Ono sings. Every time, um, yeah, every time that song comes on, all I, all I hear in my head is her asking, Hey, Rena, put, put that s song on that that Yoko woman sings. <laughs> How's the meters? I haven't gotten any. Pretty, uh, pretty low. Well. A couple responses, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you got a couple of blips on yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More at the beginning, when you first started talking. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, it takes a lot of energy. Yeah. The more to use up, the less they're going to have at the end. Yeah. A lot of it's going to dissipate. Yeah. I'm sure they, they talked to mom a lot. They did. Yeah. <laughs> they did. They were either loving it or hating it. Yeah. Oh, God. It's either or. Yeah. What she was saying, they were loving it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, yeah. All the, you know, Papa leaving the coffee cups outside. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> she yeah, was very... <laughs> yeah. We, we've been wondering about that for several years. Because we found a coffee cup shortly after he died. And we were wondering if he'd left that. For her. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Griff, did you leave it for her? It's an unanswered question that we have. You get uh, hands on on that as well. There you go. Mr. Griff, you come back. Now you come back to say hello again. I appreciate that. You sure have a lot to say. Yeah. Can you back away? Thank you. Did you leave the uh, coffee cup out there? Yeah, I'm assuming. Okay, can you back away again? Thank you. Now's your chance to talk again. He's back. Yeah. Well, he you might got be it. answering my questions. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Can you back away so we could ask another question, please? Thank you. No, nope, you got to stay back. Move back a little bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I got very emotional. I started yeah. crying. It, it, it's just, you can't hold back. You can't hold back. Just let it go. Stop. Think so. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, oh man. <laughs> <laughs>